Uh, so uh, he is uh, having a very good talent in cooking and in uh, this, um, you know, this wonderful uh, musical piece, harmonica. He's very good in playing harmonica. Uh, he is the pride of Siha EGF. So let me now call upon uh, Brother Sanga to present his special number. Brother, take your time. <laughs> Mm, Okay, I'll continue another one song, okay?
Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pusanga. Uh, it was a very, a very wonderful and pleasant, uh, you know, sound to hear. Uh, the, especially during, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking at our present situation, it's a, it's a very soothing. So thank you so much, uh, Brother Sanga, for using your wonderful talent for the glory of God. Now uh, we will call upon uh, Brother uh, Mara, as I've already introduced him. So I don't think I need to introduce again. So please, brother, take your time. A very good afternoon to all my brothers and sisters. I praise God for this time. And I'm very sorry I have to make, you know, many excuses to Sister Merlin, though, you know, she has been approaching me, you know, day after day, weeks after weeks. But I have to say no sometimes. I'm very sorry, but today I'm thankful that, you know, uh, majority of my works has been done yesterday. And today I'm able, you know, to do this, you know, in leading our Bible study. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, all brothers and sisters for coming and joining. I believe we the room Brother Mara, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. We can hear you now. Yeah. So if you properly, please give me the. Of my videos. Mm. Yes, yes, please okay. turn off your video. I think it will be better. Okay. Okay, for today's Bible study, I've chosen from, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses. 38 to 44, 38 to 42, sorry. And I have entitled it as having a merry heart in a Martha well. Having a merry heart in a Martha well. That is our the theme or the topic of today's Bible study. Mm. I believe uh, we have gone to the passage but uh, I would love to, you know, give one or two more minutes, yeah, for the better understanding of the passage. Maybe let's take time for one minute, yeah, and we may go through once more time. Okay, I think uh, we are done with our uh, readings. Today, 
I, uh, you know, I will be just, you know, sharing will not, you know, follow the interactive Bible study method. So I will just uh, share my thoughts and opinions and I will just, you know, elaborate or, you know, do my sharing. Yeah, from the Bible as well as from my knowledge and from my understanding, a point of view. So after which, yeah, all of us may take time yeah, to share. Mm. This is the story of Jesus and two women, Martha and Mary. They were the sisters. So <clears throat> Jesus and his disciples, they were on their way to Jerusalem. And, you know, on the way, they crossed a village named Bethany. Okay, this is Brother Mara, your voice is cracking again. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, Sister Merlin. Now it's better. Now it's better. Okay. We can hear you now. Mm. But Mary was, you know, sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ, listening to his teachings. And Martha was worried, you know, about her work that she has to do. And she came and approached Jesus and asking, you know, and telling Jesus that, you know, let Mary also come and help Martha. And, you know, this is, you know, uh, the story goes on. So let me go in a more detailed way. So here we see that Martha with her very different from each other. The moment Jesus came inside of Martha's home, Mary sat with Jesus, engaging him with conversation, listening and hanging on his every word to the teachings of Jesus Christ. She was enjoying, she was longing for the truth. She was desiring for the word of God. So she cannot do anything but to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and listen to his teachings. Meanwhile, Martha is very busy making preparations for the guest house. But we are not told precisely what those tasks are. But we can assume or we can, you know, guess that she began preparing a meal and many other things. But here what happened is Martha, she was worried and distracted, thinking and, you know, handling all the stuffs. She's, you know, working and doing preparing all the stuff by herself. Since Mary was with 
Jesus. She has to handle everything. But she worried so much that she came back to Jesus Christ. And she asked Jesus. Verse 40, she asks that, Lord, do not you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to come and help me, she asked Jesus. Sister Merlin, can you hear? Hello, Sister Merlin. Yes, brother, we, I can, we can hear you. I can hear you. I okay. think other also can hear you. Okay, because Please I know. Yeah, <clears throat> my, you know, the dog is going down that way. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, but the response she received from Jesus Christ is very, very different. Very different. Instead, Jesus was praising Mary. Martha was expecting Jesus to tell Mary to go and help Martha. But that is not the way Jesus Christ responds. Instead, Jesus praising Mary, saying that Mary had chosen the better part. And here, uh, the personality or the nature of Mary, let, I want to highlight it. You know, she is someone, you know, who loved to listen, who loved to know, or who wants to know the truth of the word of God. And if we go back to the previous chapter and you know uh, from the other book from the new testament mary we see uh, in john chapter 11 verse 32 so when mary and martha their brother when you know their brother when he died Martha was restless and she heard about Jesus and, you know, she went to Jesus and approached, you know, but Mary was at home. And when they meet Jesus, Mary, he literally kneeled down and sat in the feet of Jesus Christ. He loved to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and beg him and listens to him. This is her nature and her personality. But Martha is very active, proactive, competent, a very punctual, physically very strong, engaged with so many physical works and tasks. But Mary is not. Here, I want to highlight, you know, the problem or how will I say, uh, the need or the necessity in the lives of Martha. Here, the problem with Martha is not, you know, that serving and providing the hospitality. That is not her problems. And that is not her worry. And that is not her distraction serving and hospitality it is not and jesus you know he certainly commends this kind of service you know serving others you know being good to other people you know, to love our neighbors and hospitality you know jesus commends this kind of service you know many times in the bible and if we look at the previous you know the same chapter, Luke chapter 10, verse 25 till 
37, we see the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, how we should treat our neighbors. You know, dealing with our neighbors, we should love our neighbors as ourselves. You know, but here, the problem with Martha is, you know, rather, it is worry and distraction because she has to handle, she has to do all the, you know, preparations, cooking, cleaning, and, you know, for the guest, for her guest, she read about that. Mm. And, you know, according to me, how we should treat or, you know, how we should welcome our, you know, strangers who comes to our home. Think, you know, uh, the best way to welcome is, I, I think, I know, listening to them. I think this is, you know, the best way of, you know, showing our hospitality, listening to them, talking to them, interacting with them instead of, you know, doing other things. Yes, Martha was doing, you know, he was preparing for her guest. I am just thinking that if I am someone and if I am the strangers and, you know, someone whom I've never met, they welcome me in the home and they are busy with other things, preparing maybe it for me, but they didn't talk to me. You know, we do not communicate. We just, you know, stay like that. I will not feel comfortable because, you know, I may think that, whoa, they're not welcoming me or I may have such kind of feelings. For me, there is no greater hospitality than listening and interacting. If we do not talk and listen and, you know, conversate, with our strangers, with whom, you know, to the person whom we are welcoming into our home for, as a guest. They may feel bad. So this is what I feel. Mm. So here, what Martha fundamentally needs is a perspective change because she is worried about so many things and that is why Jesus gives a very simple prescription that only one thing is really needed. And what is it? It is, you know, spending time with him. Spending time with him, with Jesus Christ. Mm. And worry makes us think that many things are absolute priorities when really there is only one. So I feel the passage that we are studying today is very much relevant to our present context. Even today, when I think to myself, when I think to my family, when I look at to the society, and the congregations, the churches, and the other families and our communities. I think we all are likely identify with Martha. We worry and distracted by many things. You know, we want to provide something for our families. We want to give opportunities to our children to enrich their lives. And we want to serve others. We want to serve our neighbors. And yet we want to serve God. All is very good. Also work and think and you know, move forward for our families, for our career as well. That is very, very important but here what i want to highlight is you know both listening and doing receiving god's word and serving others are all vital to christian life very important all this 
we have to work, we have to serve, we have to prepare for our, you know, for the strangers, you know, who are staying with us. We have to do all this. They're very important. But here, I want to ask this question. How often do we forget to breathe in deeply? You know, many a times we are over busy, you know, serving the church, maybe, very good, serving others. And in our ministry circle, we are very busy caring to our EU members, to our brothers and sisters of EGF members who are dealing with, you know, and we are engaged with so many works, even inside the ministries, lots of works. Tons of works are there. And many a times, I tend to forget, you know, to breathe in deeply with the word of God, like Mary do. When I think back to myself, even at the moment, you know, I spent lots of times and I've rejected or make excuses, you know, two times to Sister Marilyn's approach to take this Bible study. That is my situation, you know, a very busy preparing for myself, for my career. I forgot many times to, you know, breath, to inhale deeply with the word of God. And I'm just thinking and, you know, imagine, and, you know, how I expected God to work in my life. You know, I expect God, you know, to work in my life wonderfully. Sometimes I want to, you know, have some kind of gift to perform miracles, a gift to heal others, a gift to pray for others that they may be healed. I want all this kind of, you know, gift from God. But when I think back to myself, how I am, you know, giving my time to God, how I am spending my time with God, how much I'm giving my time to God, it is very less. And for me, it is not appropriate to expect God in our life to work wonderfully. We expect God to work in our life to use us, to be a channel of blessings. We expect God, but we do not allow God to work because we do not give time to God. And for me, I feel like God is really using me. You know, in spite of, you know, how much time that I am giving, I think God is using me and God is using all of us. Though we give, you know, a very little time to God. And if we get more of time, more of our energies and thoughts and our quality time to God, how much, you know, more God is going to use us. I'm just thinking. So here, the works of Martha and, you know, all the tasks that she's handling, I think it is also, you know, good, but that is not, you know, the first priority. And, you know, our attitude in you know serving is i felt a very important what kind of attitude do i have do we have when we are serving the church when we are serving our ministry when we are serving god our attitude towards god our attitude towards our friends and other people if we do not have the right attitude though we might be serving god Though we may be giving our you know, time, our energy, our efforts, and our ability. 
for others. But if we do not possess the right, the right, the right attitude, I think that will not work much. We have to have the right attitude. I felt that is very, very important. And here, I also want to share, uh, you know, uh, the attitude or, you know, how Mary was longing for Jesus Christ, you know, how she was longing for Jesus Christ, for the Lord. The psalmist, David, how he longed for God in Psalm number 42, 1. As a deer longs for a stream of cold water, so I long for you, O God. And Psalm 63, 1, it says, I long for you. My whole being desires you like a dry waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. I think it is very important for all of us to ask ourselves how much we are longing and yeah for God and you know how we are desiring you know how is our desire towards God? I think all these are important. Service is important. Working for others is important. But the longing, the truth, the desire that we have for God and for the truth is beyond. And, you know, I am one of the person, you know, who always worry about things, what will happen tomorrow, what I will do, and how it will be. But this passage, you know, as I was meditating and reading and going to, to some commentaries, it really sparked to me. And I have learned a lot. And even today, Jesus Christ, you know, he is inviting to all of us, you know, who are worried and who are distracted like Martha by many things to sit and rest in his presence, to, he to hear his words of grace and truth to be renewed in faith and strengthened for his service, for his service. Mm. As we all are the <clears throat> EGF members, you know, one time or the other time, you know, youth friends, our small brothers and sisters, they came and approached, they have, you know, high expectations you know, from us that, you know, we have the answer for the problems, that we may help them, you know, but when we are not, you know, in health, deeply with the word of God, you know, we are not ready. Many a times I am shocked by the questions that has been raised by you members. I couldn't give the answer. And I am scared to give them answer. I'm not confident. So it is very much necessary and very much needed for us to be deeply rooted in the word of God. Until and unless we sit or we sat at the feet of Jesus Christ, you know, we may not be able to, you know, come, you know, with you know such um, work, you know, or will not be able to come out with such you know gifts or you know the power of the work of the Lord. 
and God, you know, it will be very difficult for us. No, for God to use us. So we have to be deeply rooted. And, you know, we must sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. And how we must sit at the feet of Jesus Christ? Like Mary, we must read the word of God, study the word of God, and research the word of God and apply in our words. I think that is very important. We see in Matthew, you know, she get first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. First thing first. I think this is important. Yeah. We want so many things. We actually got so many things. That is good. But when we forget or when we jump over the first things, I think the process is not right. We must follow the steps. First, we must sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and prepare ourselves. And we must you know, follow the first thing that is to seek Christ and his kingdom and his righteousness. And that is our first priority as a believer, as a servant of God, as EGF member, even as you member, as a whole of children. So, yeah, this is all that yeah, I would say. So, I believe you also have a yeah. can learn many lessons. So yeah, I will give that time to Sister Marilyn or the other yeah friends uh, for whoever would like to take the time. Okay, thank you. God bless. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Mara, for a very wonderful and meaningful uh, Bible study, uh, a short message, I should say. And this is a uh, very significant for me because this is one of uh, you know uh, one of uh, the first meaningful Bible study that I have attended. Uh, this passage, uh, which is conducted by Sister Amulin, uh, our uh, ex um, staff worker uh, uh, during our college time, so she took uh, this uh, uh, distinct passage as a Bible study in our uh, college hostel uh, <clears throat> fellowship. So this this is my, you know, first experience of the, you know, how to have a Bible study, how to conduct a Bible study. So this is a very important uh, Bible passage for me. And uh, till today, I could not forget how uh, she taught us and how she take the class. So I'm very happy uh, that, uh, you know, Brother Mara uh, choose uh, this particular uh, Bible passage. And as, as he has um, <clears throat> mentioned, it is a very important uh, a very important uh, Bible passage. I think uh, uh, we still have some more time to have a, a, a short time of discussion. Uh, you know, if you have any anything that you want to add regarding the this uh, Bible passage, any any point or anything that you learn uh, from this Bible passage or any new thing that you want to add, please feel free to do so. And after the discussion, we will have a Bible. Um, uh, we will have a mass prayer, and I want to uh, request in advance, uh, Brother Ruatliana, uh, to end the mass prayer uh, uh, with uh, in, to have a concluding prayer. So, uh, Brother Ruata, uh, please uh, accept this as you know uh, my um, these invitations um, to end the mass prayer. And now I will open the time to. Uh, have uh, discussions since we still have some more time to spare. Please feel free to, uh, you know, 
uh, take part and feel free to share. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Mara. That is very insightful. In this particular passage, the narrative of Jesus the happening in his lifetime is, <clears throat> I think it is pregnant with significance, even up till this point. Uh, I just want to add something. I've had a very nice talk with Brother Ruta in uh, some, some months back. And I asked him this question, what is the one thing that uh, Christian, so-called Christian society here in Mizoram has missed so terribly as Christian. And he answered me, he says, the way we understand Christ or our Christology, the study of Christ has been so unclear. We do not understand Christ and his works in Mizoram. And that's why the, all the confusion arises. But that's what he told me and he, he went on to elaborate a lot of things. It was a very nice discussion with uh, my brother Rota here. Now, in line with that, uh, as we look into this passage very deeply, we understand that Christ value more of our quality time with him than other things. Now, in Mizoram, we have the church, we have ministry, we do all kinds of things, ushering, decoration, food, right? Uh, uh, how we call logistics, seating arrangement, you know, in any kinds of crusades and conferences, we give it all. It's it's wonderful. Absolutely. I have no, uh, uh, I have nothing against such kinds of arrangements. And we got to give our best for the Lord in everything, very professional. But the one thing that even music also, we want to give the best music, shoot the best music video. But we are so into this outward and you know, hospitality and and that we often lose our time with Jesus Christ, our quiet time with Jesus Christ, our intimate relationship with Christ. And if you want to call these people, come, let's pray, but they don't want to pray, right? They say, we're busy. We need to go for a meeting. We need to arrange this and that. We're always organizing, organizing and managing, but we never really take the time. And we, it's very difficult to get young boys and girls and in Chalai Paul, all these also really to, to get them to pray, to get them to listen, to get them to study the word of God and be at the foot of Christ, the feet of Christ. This is the problem. Even the church also, if we look beautiful church buildings. So we place premium on the secondary thing in Mizoram a lot. Secondary thing. We need to understand that Christ what he values more is our quality time with him or sitting down at his feet, listening to him, learning from him with an open heart, worshiping him. Now, it's very strange that Jesus let Mary, Martha sit at his feet. Now, back in those days, during the cult, in that culture, they don't really allow women to sit, right? They didn't really allow women to learn. It is a very patriarchal society. But what Jesus did is uh, really amazing. It's just really mind boggling. Let the woman sit at his feet and then teaching her. And the woman also marry with an open heart, really open heart, receptive, willing to learn something from Christ. And I think this is missing. And this is a very important passage tonight. Uh, I'm also been really challenged when Brother Mara was explaining all that, that we need to sit at the foot of Christ, forget about all the other arrangements and programs and you know schedules and things like that. Christ values more quality time with him. He wants to teach us, he wants to talk to us, he wants to rebuke us, he wants to comfort us. And that is the central message that I believe here is something that's truly profound. Even it's more, even more profounder, <laughs> there's such a term in our present state of Mizoram, where we do things, everything so formally. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Mark, for uh, that uh, wonderful um, <clears throat> additions regarding this Bible passage. And I think uh, this is what uh, uh, the problem that we are facing as a Christians in Mizoram, because as you have mentioned, uh, we, we have so many 
our priority, the way we set our priority is not correct, actually. Uh, so uh, we have so many priority, uh, you know, we give more priority uh, to many things uh, besides Jesus. In, in the name of serving Jesus, we did so many things, but the central, uh, you know, the central part is not, uh, we tend to forget. Uh, so I'm very, uh, very, very agree with what you are saying. So is there any... Any any more point that you want to add from uh, brother Ruata, brother uh, brother Zawa is also here. So brother uh, brother Nundanga, brother Zotea, and I don't know who is this red me. So uh, please uh, feel free to contribute if you have any more point that you want to add. Oh, I hope I'm audible. Brother, you are audible. Please go ahead. I want to jump in first so that uh, if I say anything wrong, they may conclude it or they may correct me. Anyone can correct me. Uh, I agree with uh, what Brother Mark said. And at the same time, uh, it was always, I think, for me, especially, it was always good to see Brother Mara, especially when he put on his video. But this time, uh, so sad that his network is not so good. Uh, by the way, now we are able to see him. Uh, I think uh, last night, uh, what came in my mind is that uh, discipleship, like Reverend Yok, last night, Reverend Yok Romnong, he said that uh, evangelism is quantitative in nature, so it is always to the more, more people. But when you talk about discipleship, it is qualitative in nature. So like Bible studies and all, like uh, I had, I think you also had that brother Zawa, brother Marx, they used to say that they had this uh, kind of uh, discipleships from every long time, more than a decade, but still we are not increasing, right? We are not increasing. It's difficult to increase in our numbers, even in uh, this mentorship, uh, 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 I they give me some uh, EU numbers, so I used to contact them, but uh, they just did not feel like uh, cooperating with us. So it is very difficult to uh, increase in numbers. So maybe this may not be changed uh, in uh, in a way that we may expect. Even in the Bible, also we see that uh, uh, when Jesus preached. Uh, the, the word of uh, the word of God, people start to live. So he even asks to his disciples that you also do you want to live. So I think discipleship is always uh, qualitative in nature. And I think uh, when we talk as a whole of Mizoram, I totally agree with Brother Mark. At the same time, I think this may be very difficult for the whole mass uh, to follow the discipleship. Maybe that is what I think. Oh, I, okay, that is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother uh, Zoltia, for your wonderful uh, contributions and uh, very true also. And if any one of us have any more that you want to add, please go ahead. Brother Rota has raised his hand, so I think he can be given time. Hmm. Hello. Yes, Brother Rota, please go ahead. Yes, um, it was a, a very interesting Bible study, and uh, I am really enriched. And it was not the way how I have uh, ever thought I would be listening but so it really enriched me enlightened me also and give me gave me more insights i guess and, and adding to brother mark what he had said um i i was reminded of one of uh our pastors uh, back in arunachal when we were there so he spoke on the time of christmas so because uh, the way how we spend uh, celebrate Christmas here in Mizoram is a bit different than 
the Dafar Nachal. In our Nachal, from around the middle part of November, we already start celebrating Christmas till 25th December. So it's a very long process and the preparation is very hectic and you know, we never have time at home actually from November to December. So we are always engaging church activities. So, so he, uh, on one of his preaching, he spoke about someone saying that, uh, he said in Hindi, so I'll just trans translate it in English, that I was too much into, uh, uh, I was celebrating Christmas so much that I even forgot Christ, the person who he was celebrating. So I think this passage, uh, this portion of the Bible and what it want to teach us is very clear here as we have just heard because um, into our context today, as Brother Mark has also mentioned, we are engaged a lot into various things, you know. So uh, here, Jesus, uh, if we look into the passage, Jesus did not uh, say those things are not good. But he, he, he said, uh, but one thing, okay, that, that thing is more important. So we need to look into the way how we, uh, uh, the way how we worship and follow Christ. Because in the process of following Christ, because uh, if we look into the background, into the Jewish context, into their context uh, here, it was uh, traditional, especially for the Christians out there during their time. Hospitality was a kind of uh, expected thing, and it was a kind of, um, how will I say, it was like a mandatory thing to do, to do charity, to be a good host for others. So it was like that. But on top of that, even though the, there was traditions and customs, but more than that, ha having time and listening to God, listening to the word of God is very important because in the process of uh, preparing ourselves for the ministry of God, we might fail to look to the person or to that one thing we, and we, we might miss somehow. So here also, why did uh, Jesus uh, a kind of um, rebuke or told Martha was because Martha was not intending to sit with uh, her sister and listen to Christ, the preaching, the word of God. Um, but she was intending to, she, she, meant, she wanted Jesus because Jesus was teaching. And so she thought that the weightage of Jesus saying that, go and help your sister. So that might uh, change the mind of Mary and help her sister in the preparation. But because see, uh, if we see in another version, like in the uh, Arabic or in the Ethiopic or even in the Vulgate, we see that she, he, she was not even sitting. She did not even take a pause. She just went from the kitchen, the, prepare, the place where he, she was preparing, and she just came there. And her intention was not to listen to the word of God, but to help her. So in, our, in the process of our ministry also, instead of help, making others listen, and even ourselves listening to the word of God, we might engage, you know, like, uh, more. So in, in that process, we might fail to listen and take time to listen to the word of God. So I just wanted to end, uh, uh, add the same thing which has been already said. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Ruata. That is a very important point and uh, a very valid uh, enough point that you have added into uh, this discussion. Thank you so much. And uh, I just, uh, while uh, Brother Zava, uh, Brother Zote and all, while they are thinking, one thing that I just want to add is uh, that um, yeah, it's written here that, um, you know, um, one thing, 
one thing is written in uh, verse um, uh, verse uh, 42, but only one thing is needed. So that this one thing is, uh, we have seen this, uh, uh, this one thing in a different Bible passage, like in Psalm number 27, verse 4. One thing have I desire of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And then in, uh, in Philippians chapter 3, Paul says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So I think uh, today we need to choose, you know, that one thing, that good thing that uh, uh, Mary is choosing and that uh, which Jesus says that he, uh, it will not be taken away from her. So um, I, I just want to add uh, regard uh, that one thing, the meaning of that one thing in different Bible passage. So um, I'll give the time again uh, to uh, more uh, uh, participants who wants to, in, uh, to uh, raise their opinion or who want to add some more point. Sister, uh, Brother Zawa, can you hear me? Is Brother Zawa, Tip, or Brother? <clears throat> Hello? Oh. Yes. Brother Zawa, please go ahead. Can you, oh, I hope you can hear my voice. Yeah, my, yes, 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 uh, we can hear you fine. It's a little noisy <laughs> with our neighbors. Yes, let me share one, one two minutes. Um, from this passage, yeah, we can notice the word uh, busy also. Yeah, the word busy is very common these days. We say, I am busy with this and that, and committee, in church, meeting, all this. So uh, Martha was busy. Uh, it's cooking, uh, to see, and um, but Mary was busy with God, with Jesus. So um, it is good uh, to engage uh, with Jesus. Yeah, for Jesus, busy for Jesus. Yeah, it's good, but busy with Jesus is. Yeah, much better, I think. Uh, as serving the Lord, are we busy for God or are we, are we busy with God? Yeah, that is my question. It's starting my heart yeah, most time. Are we really busy with God or are we just busy for God without uh, no communication, intimate relationship with God? This is very challenging, I think. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's all for this time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Zawa. That is, even though it was short, that is a very powerful, I think, it, a very powerful message. So busy with God or busy for God is a totally different thing. So thank you so much for raising and, you know, asking that important questions. Uh, brother, thank you so much. Is there anyone that who wants to add more? more point uh, sister um just one more thing because yes this, please go ahead it has a lot of things to talk about one one very important thing that we find here is also jealousy the theme of jealousy okay now until she came to jesus martha and complained jesus didn't really rebuke her all right it was at this point when she came to jesus and said see my sister isn't doing nothing i'm really busy that's when she complained to jesus when she is jealous the whole trouble starts that jesus rebuked her now this is very true also in our uh, modern day you know, when we feel that we are doing so many things but our friends are not doing nothing <laughs> right brother Mara? 
That's uh, a very valid point. <laughs> I am always at Natlang. Nobody wants to join me. And so we get, I mean, even in the church, I've seen people who got angry, like especially EU, EU tipo. When we, you know, they feel that they are doing a lot of things and they become proud and arrogant and they try to lord over and they are complaining. That's what the Lord does not want also. God just doesn't rebuke and say, hey, I don't want you to do ushering work. I don't want you to make this. Thing. He didn't do that. But it's when that jealousy, when you feel that you did better, when you feel that you perform better and the others are not doing, when you have that negative mind, that's very dangerous. That's when the Lord also rebuked here. And I think this is something we all need to learn as well. See, sister, last night we had SEGF, CIEGF, um, short fellowship, life fellowship, and not this Bible study. Very wonderful. Sister Marilyn, we praise her. She did a lot of work, all kinds of things, but she's not jealous. She's not uh, saying, oh, brother, you didn't do this. She's shouldering upon herself, gladly, joyfully doing it, serving the Lord joyfully. This is what we are to learn here also, right, brother Mara? And this is something that we find so lacking here. And... Uh, I think all of us here as graduates, we need to look into our hearts. Are we serving the Lord joyfully, gleefully, gladly accepting, even when others, our OBs, our friends, our KTP, TKP members, our EGS are not doing, am I doing my job joyfully? I think there's something we can learn. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, brother. That is a uh, very important. See, we have the passage that we have learned uh, this evening is only five uh, verse, but in, in these five verse, there are so many important, uh, you know, things that we can learn. Like as brother Mark have mentioned regarding, you know, jealousy. Uh, we clearly see that Martha is very jealous of uh, his sister, uh, her sister, sitting, uh, you know, at the feet of Jesus and listening, doing nothing. So, I, I, and on top of that, uh, if we look at uh, Martha, he is, uh, we can see that she is very distracted and worried. Uh, might be she is thinking that, oh, the refreshment that I've prepared might not be enough for this many people. Oh, this might not be tasty. This might not be, you know, uh, they might dislike uh, the refreshment that I have prepared. So she's, she was very distracted and, you know, she was very worried. So unnecessary distraction and un unnecessary, uh, you know, worriedness is um, clearly shown in Martha characters. So which can be, uh, you know, which can stem from uh, doing all those, uh, uh, which uh, the, all those uh, important looking important jobs, but uh, which is not very essential, I should say, which is not the priority, which should not be uh, the priority. So. Uh, thank you so much for uh, brother for adding that one more important topic that we can learn from this very small passage that we are learning today. Is there any 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 anyone who wants to contribute? We still have time. Um, see, our EGF Bible study tends to be quite long, so <laughs> please uh, bear with us. And uh, so, in order not to get bored, please uh, please uh, contribute. Is there any po more point that you want to add? Please go ahead. Okay, uh, I want to add. Okay, one. go ahead, go ahead, brother Zotia. Uh, as I came uh, to know more and more about UESI, we study many things that uh, which will increase our knowledge and our uh, mind. So uh, I think this is not to share to anyone, but uh, with you, brothers only. Uh, what, uh, like, brother. Mara has said oh, one verse from Psalm 63, verse one, I think that uh, in that verse, I will search you in the morning. So I don't know how we do, but uh, I used to have sleep uh, sleeping trouble. So but what I can do is I can wake up at the same time. So if I consistently wake up at the same time, it helped me sleep earlier. So. Um, so in the morning, depending on uh, before uh, seven, usually if I don't have on call and all, I used to sit at five. And if I have on call around two, sometimes I wake up at 
1 m 2 m at the time i have to uh, increase to 7 p uh, 7 am like that so this really helps me <laughs> and i don't know how you others are doing so i think it the this really uplift my spiritual life that what brother mara i think that is the central theme right that uh, to have intimate relationship with christ so morning is the best one <laughs> so <laughs> i think if we don't have one we can buy a smart uh, this one it does not cost a lot of money around 500 only so it helped me a lot so i want to say that <laughs> thank you thank you so much brother zotea for uh, sharing that very important piece of information so thank you so much um and I just want to add another thing is that the significance of sitting at the feet of Jesus. So if when I check around uh, this uh, commentary, uh, sitting at the feet of Jesus implies so many things. It means so many things, like it implies readiness to accept and obey what Jesus teaches, or to sit at the uh, feet of Jesus. It also implies submission to Jesus. It implies faith in who Jesus is. It implies discipleship. It implies love. So I think um, we need to be sitting at the feet of Jesus more and more. As our Brother Zotia have practiced, I think we need to have certain types of uh, practice to sit at the feet of uh, Jesus. And um, I think, uh, is there anyone who wants to contribute uh, more point? Brother Sanga, Brother Pusanga, hello, Luta. Thank you. So then I think we will uh, going, uh, we will conclude uh, uh, this uh, uh, Bible uh, uh, study. I would like to once again thank uh, Brother Mara for giving us uh, the time to uh, conduct this Bible study in spite of his busy schedule and his, you know, so many works that he need to uh, be doing. But I'm so thankful that he agrees uh, to be here. And so, brother, thank you so much. And may God continue to bless you and use you for the extension of his kingdom. So I just want to uh, conclude this Bible study by, you know, just saying this, that our highest priority need to be choosing the good path, you know, because uh, Mary is choosing the good path that is sitting at the feet of Jesus. So uh, all of us uh, need to choose and need to prioritize uh, uh, to be you know, at the feet of uh, Jesus and, you know, to be, uh, you know, always in the uh, good side of uh, Jesus. So uh, that is what I want to uh, add and that is what uh, how I want to conclude this uh, Bible study. So thank you so much, uh, all my dear brother and sister for your active participations. And now uh, we will uh, continue with uh, our um, uh, mass prayer. And I will share the prayer point and the um, uh, this thing, the prayer point and the uh, praise point that I've prepared from my side. And if you have any point that you want to add, you can uh, you can um, continue. You can contribute it uh, in the uh, chat box, or you can uh, you can share it uh, directly in the. Uh, uh, directly to your mic and so I will start uh, my screen sharing uh, just um, uh, bear with me and as I've said I uh, brother Ruata will end uh, this uh, mass prayer with the concluding prayer I think you all can see my screen I believe so uh, this is the praise point and the prayer point that I have uh, prepared from my side. Um, uh, in the praise point, the first point is that uh, for God guidance and protection to each one of us uh, and for giving us a wonderful opportunity to have Bible study and prayer meet 
and also for a wonderful resource person, Brother Mara. Please continue to pray for him as he is pursuing his uh, BTH. And on top of that, they could not have a proper uh, a physical uh, class. So please uh, continue and remember him in his prayer so, so that God will continue to use him uh, for his glory. And all, uh, please praise God for all the members who are present here for uh, this CIEGF Bible study. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, please, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would like to uh, re request you all to come back in the coming week also. And uh, please uh, praise God that uh, uh, members from different parts of Mizoram could come together in this manner. And uh, let's also praise God for all those brothers and sisters from EUSI family who are who recovered from this COVID-19 infections. And uh, as Brother Mark has mentioned, we have a wonderful uh, you know, and fruitful time of fellowship and condolence program at Brother Zuya and Sister Mami's residence after a, a gap of many months. Uh, uh, we could have a physical uh, fellowship. So please praise God for that. And uh, we have a condolence program uh, 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 for uh, Brother Zuya's uh, father, Brother Zuya who lost uh, his father. And uh, please uh, let's uh, thank God for a successfully concluded tent making training program organized by USI Northeast Zone. And uh, let's especially thank God for Sister Linda who did a wonderful job as a program coordinator. Sister Linda is uh, our CIEGF. We still uh, uh, claim her as our EGF member, but right now she is uh, um, <clears throat> located in uh, Nathiel. Uh, so we, let's thank God for that also. And uh, the prayer points are for all the member of CIEGF who are busy in our own work and life for God's continuous blessing and protection during this pandemic and for Brother Zuya and a family for God's continuous blessing and for Brother Sangha and his family for God's continuous blessing and guidance upon them. And let's also pray for Brother Peter, uh, who is the Director of Student Affairs in the University in Mongolia. Let's pray, that, let's pray to God that God will show him the way to have a maximum impact among his students. And let's also pray for uh, Sister Rod Feli, who is busy touring the southern part of Missouri due to her work for WHO, for God's protections and guidance. And let's also pray for Brother Nundanga. All right, Brother Nundanga, he's here uh, amongst us, but uh, he is tested positive for COVID-19 and he is in home isolations. Let's pray, uh, let's pray to God that he will uh, grant him the healing and grace uh, he need um, to fully recover. And uh, let's also uh, pray, continue to pray for the ongoing synchronous Bible studies organized by USI Mizoram every Friday night and unit Bible studies organized by different EU and EGF unit for the presence of the Holy Spirit and God's guidance for all the participants and resource persons. And let's continue to pray for our staff couple and their family during uh, this difficult situation for good health and his protection. Let's pray that God will give them the wisdom and the means to continue their ministry uh, and continue to have an impact in uh, Missouri USI ministry. And for all our dear brother and sister, we are affected by COVID-19. And please continue to pray for uh, my aunt uh, who is suffering from uh, you know, a small intestine cancer and right now undergoing um, uh, chemotherapy. She still need to undergo two cycle of chemotherapy in Tata Hospital Mumbai for uh, strength, uh, the strength to undergo this treatment. And for all our EGF members who are frontline worker in our fight against COVID-19 and for COVID-19 situation in Siha district, let's thank God for a lesser new cases for the past few days. And let's also pray that God will continue to take complete control of these situations. And let's pray for Brother Mama Thea, Brother Sena, Sister Moi Moi, and Brother Mara, who are a theology students from USI Mizoram family, for God's guidance and wisdom in their studies. And uh, Sister Galili, Sister Galili is one of our active members in CIEGF, uh, who is right now in LRM Hospital, Isol for Goldstone Remover. So please, uh, let's pray to God that God will give uh, her um, uh, the grace and the, you know, 
he, uh, healing that he, she needs. And for Brother Ramtia, Assistant Professor at Government Jampai College, who is here today recovering from COVID-19 infection. Lecture in North Van Lai Pai, uh, suffering from cold and he's not feeling well. So let's uh, let's pray to God that uh, God will grant, uh, grant grant him the healing that he need. And please uh, pray for me as I'm going to lead uh, Siaha College EU Bible study tonight at seven. So please pray that uh, God will uh, use me uh, to have uh, an impact on this student. So those are the praise point and the prayer point that I've. Uh, continue, uh, I've collected. If you have any more point that you want to add, please feel free to do so. I have one more, sister. Let's pray for Brother Ruata Lienna, who's here. Brother Ruata will hopefully be applying for a probationary pastor under BCM. Uh, so let us pray that uh, God will make give him the, the right, the best career, Brother Ruata. He is a, already a trained theologian. Okay. More point. I think those are the prayer point and the praise point. So if there is no more point that you want to add, we will all, I would like to request all of us to on our mic and we will have uh, uh, the mass prayer and at the end, Brother Ruata, but Brother Ruata will end uh, this mass prayer and that will be the end for uh, this evening program. So let's all look to God in prayer. <clears throat> Oh, gracious heavenly Father heaven, God, uh, heaven, thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity and the wonderful time to have, uh, uh, to have fellowship together and to study your, uh, your words and to have to listen a special number from Brother Sanga and a different, uh, uh, different members from different parts of Mizoram. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, giving the time uh, and the help to be here. Uh, in our means and God continues to be with them and help them so that they will to uh, be actively involved in the coming week uh, uh, studies and also in uh, different activities of uh, USI and also uh, learning from our all worship the aspirant our worship in the ministry it's so easy to get yes, family my all other areas and programs for also want to thank you for last night a fruitful time of fellowship and condolence program a physical fellowship and condolence program that we have and we had at brother zia as a mommy resident and thank you so much for giving us this wonderful opportunity to be together in uh, after many gaps, uh, please continue to bless whatever fellowship and sharing that we have uh, for the growth uh, of our spiritual life. We also want to thank you for a successful, concluded attend making program, training program for my USI Northeast. And we especially thank you for uh, Sister Linda, who did a wonderful job as a program coordinator. We thank you uh, for her life and continue to share you. Uh, her for the exclusive of your kingdom. We also want to support all the SCGF members who are present here and who could be with us wherever they are. Thank you so much for their life. Thank you so much for giving them a wonderful job and wonderful family. Please continue to bless them and help them so that they will be actively involved in this ministry. And so we also want to pray for the family of Brother Sophia, 
for all of them, those who are working on the, and those who are studying, they are right and lead the children of them to this The King, we are so grateful to you because of the word that has been spoken to us through your servant, uh, Brother Marak. Lord, we thank you for enabling us to attend this uh, Bible study once again. Lord, as we have heard about 
a very important uh, message from your servant once again about choosing the right thing, the one thing to be with you, to have help us to have a closer devotion with you, help us to walk with you so that we will not um, fall or we will not slip away from your mercy in the process of serving you, Lord. Many times, especially in our churches and even among the youths, especially today, we have engaged ourselves in so many other activities which are, of course, important for your ministry, for the success of your ministry, but we fail to come close to you, Lord. We want you to revive us. We want you to uh, help us once again so that we will choose uh, to learn from you at your feet so that and that will enable us to strengthen our personal relationship with you. Lord, we thank you so much for all that we, ha we have heard, we have discussed, we have shared. Lord, bless each and every one of us as we continue with our daily activities from uh, tomorrow. Lord, be with us in our day-to-day -day lives as we are still in the midst of pandemic. Lord, we ask your protections and guidance. And also, Lord, in the midst of this pandemic also, Lord, you have been so good to each and every one of us, even though some of our brothers and sisters have suffered. Lord, you have strengthened them and helped them regain their health. We thank you. And we pray especially for uh, the people who are tirelessly working, serving you in different capacity that you have given them, Lord. Help them to reach to the people who are uh, losing their eternal life, Lord, help each and every one of them. As we are about to wind up, Lord, we pray that your guidance will be with each and every one of us. And we pray especially this evening for our sister Merlin as she's going to take a very important Bible class from tonight. Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit to guide her, anoint her so that whatever she has prepared and Lord, whatever is needed, you will bless her and use her so that through the study that she will be providing to those who are going to listen, Lord, they will and they will be rich. Their heart will be melted, and you will, oh, you will break through the uh, block them to listen to you and to serve you, Lord. Use her mightily. We commit ourselves, our lives, our everything into your hand. With thanksgiving in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Brother Wata. And thank you, everyone, thank you. for gracing us with your presence. Thank you so much. Love you. Can we take picture? Take yeah. Oh, Brother Ramtea, finally. How are yeah. you? Doing? I, I'm good, but the brother. Oh. I'm improving. Brother Ramtea and Brother Mara looks like brothers, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, done. Okay, thank you. Take care, everyone. Wonderful study. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Please come back next week. Bye. Bye. Sorry, to you later. Sorry, to you later. Sorry, to you later. Ma passe. Oh, ma passe, right? Ma passe. Uh, thank you, Brother Mara. Wonderful. <laughs>